Hello friends. Every now and again life throws you something a bit unusual and it can be great or it can be a bit sucky. Most of the time though it's sort of a mix of both. Like when three to four hundred years of oaky existence comes crashing down over our neighbour's fence. While the woodworker in me is obviously screaming in celebration the situation does give me pause. The torn up root bundle alone is quite a bit bigger than I am. Leaving aside the humbling end of an era-ness and demise of habitat for god knows how many species, there's a whole load of practical concerns here. Which, if you don't mind taking a leap of logic with me, leads me on to why chainsaw mills are better than bandsaw mills. And no, I'm not some kind of crazy charlatan crackpot that thinks bandsaw mills don't have a whole load of advantages, it's just that it all depends on circumstances. While this previous version of myself nibbles away at the crown of this tree like some kind of demonic beaver, let me explain and persuade you. Now, for a very long time I thought chainsaw mills were hugely inferior to bandsaw mills and I just didn't want anything to do with them. Like most people, my primary gripe was the wastage involved in cutting boards from the kef of the chainsaw chain, which is a lot thicker than your average bandsaw blade. Let's have a quick look at some figures. So a 404 chain has a kef of 0.35 inches, 3 8 inch chain slightly less, average bandsaw band 0.093 inches which is loads less but then in hard woods and difficult woods that can kind of be realistically increased to more like 0.15 inches because of the wavering and blade drift. So yeah the wastage is definitely a valid concern. Most of the chainsaw mills other weaknesses stem from this wastage and just the amount of material it needs to remove per cut. It's leading to less fuel efficiency and just taking a longer time. So what's good about the chainsaw mill? Let's come back to our giant oak tree. It's fallen over across a river and in a bog. We don't have a tractor or any of the other infrastructure that would allow us to move the whole log from here to say where a bandsaw mill might be. Even if we did have a tractor we'd most likely mush up the field and get stuck in the process. Despite looking a bit like a windows background the weather's been ridiculously changeable in the few days we've been working here. We've had snow, hail, wind, rain, sunshine, the lot. So anyway, tractor, log skidding, log arch type machinery and infrastructure is something you don't need with a chainsaw mill. Nor do you have this really big investment that you need to stop rusting and cover from the weather and look after. All you need is a decently big sized chainsaw and an Alaskan mill and that's basically it. You can think of the chainsaw mill as the TIE fighter compared to the star destroyer of a bandsaw. They both kill rebel scum but the chainsaw mill is more manoeuvrable and it can get into places the star destroyer can't. If it's crazy slopey or boggy or access is otherwise impossible, you don't need to worry about making a track, slab up your log and then take the bits out one at a time. The waste from all your chainsaw milling can just be left in situ and will nourish the ground, arguably making them a bit more environmentally friendly. Although tropical illegal logging and milling with chainsaws is a different sad story. Anyway, let's get back on track and actually do some milling now we've got most of the twiggy bits out of the way. First steps to set up the straight edge stroke ladder and make sure the log's all nice and stable, it's not going to roll halfway. My friend Paul who's with me here hadn't done any milling before and we were all ready to go but there was some kind of problem with the chain on the guide bar which was clearly overheating. After some investigation it turned out the guide bar nose had narrowed somehow and was pinching the drive links causing way too much friction. Various fettling attempts later and we finally resigned. I had to go back to the workshop and Paul hung around for a bit while I fetched a diamond grinding bit and a battery powered Dremel and that actually worked brilliantly for just 
increasing the width of the groove very slightly at the nose there where there's tungsten carbide that little unexpected glitch out of the way the first cut actually went really quite well it's not a huge branch but it's certainly a nice bit of wood to warm up on and there's some really nice oak heartwood in that that Paul's probably going to use to make a workbench somehow I managed to not record the next slab but hopefully my chainsaw milling is better than my videoing now that we've established a flat edge on this we're leaving the ladder off and that's mainly because Paul's there to help me with this one it's probably the first time I've done any milling with another person and it sure does help with the beginning and end of a cut to have someone to help hold part of the mill with that big slab cut we then had time for plenty of umming and ahhing and measuring and trying to work out where that would go on the workbench before realizing we could actually cut that in half there wasn't a lot left to that log but after a little bit of refueling it was still worth taking a little two inch skim off it just as a nice little board there's still plenty of heartwood in it this little chainsaw we've been using for all the cross cuts and to tidy up is uh, ms440 it's what I used to use on the chainsaw mill but after rebuilding the engine about three times I decided it was definitely time for a bigger saw on the mill for general groundwork though it's a lovely saw we set up and made the first cut of this other log it was quite a small one and that was about it for that day prepping and chainsaw milling logs definitely isn't a quick job here we are the next day though the bike's got all the stuff loaded on it we're just about getting through the bog this is what you do if you've forgotten any kind of funnel to get the bar oil in around the chainsaw mill we call it the fun scrunch I can't recommend it it's really nice being able to just get stuck straight in there with an established top cut so the milling begins straight away there's all that material being removed from the kerf that we were talking about earlier incidentally you've probably noticed a lack of any kind of guard on the nose of this mill and that's because I've never used it with anyone else it's just been me uh, I definitely need to put one of those on there as a bit of a priority if I'm gonna have people helping me again it really is only the beginning and end of cut where you need help though once the mill's resting on its guiding edge then it sort of self drives and it really shouldn't need any pushing as such the only pushing you do is downwards on the mill so it's staying nicely rooted onto that straight edge a gradient helps but the key is really having a sharp chain with that it will just kind of self feed having the depth gauges filed correctly and it completely evenly sharpened on both sets of the teeth on both sides is totally crucial if you're gonna get a straight cut and that's doubly true if you're using a full-on rip chain that's sharpened at 10 degree angle that's even more fussy the next day the weather did its spectacular change and it's just beautiful down here the kid in me is going to be really heartbroken to see this tree go it just makes such a cool little thing to hide under and clamber all over it make an excellent den these levering tools come in really handy to roll the logs around and get them lined up ready for milling just because I haven't really shown it this is how I attach it to a, a small log it's just some screws simply down through a scrap of plywood just clamping it down you do have to be careful the screws don't go down too far or the chain will obviously hit them it hasn't happened to me yet but I'm always quite wary of it so that second slab was quite a thick one and I'm going to change it for the next one so let's look at how we adjust the height of the mill it's just putting two spacers in loosening some bolts putting the rails down to that height and then I know that it's going to cut at whatever thickness the spacers were now I'm going to wrap this video up here even though I've only nipped the outer branches of this massive oak tree similarly I've only really scratched the surface of the never ending debate about chainsaw mill versus band mill hopefully being able to see it in action sort of gives you some ideas it's always going to be a lot more exertion than say a fully hydraulic band mill 
but at the same time it's lovely just being out in the woods making usable lumber from what otherwise might just be left to rot. Maybe in another video I'll talk about the benefits of the chainsaw mill on really big stuff when I come to do that on this big oak tree. If you like that idea don't forget to subscribe and if you have any thoughts or angles in this debate that I haven't considered then I'd love to hear them in the comments below. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.